Hello, welcome to Christchurch, everyone. So nice to see everyone in the building. I'm going a bit crazy. Do I need to do anything? Hold it further down. Okay. Uh, my name is Beth. Um, this is Sam. And we're going to be leading the service this morning. Um, yeah, and welcome to everyone online. If you're online, please say a big hello on the chat. Um, the online host is going to be very lonely if you don't do that. <laughs> so please say hi to them. Um, and this morning is a special service. Um, we're welcoming Bishop Graham with us this morning, and, um, which is very exciting. And he is going to be licensing Andy as the vicar of Christchurch, which seems bizarre because we've been open a while, but we're really excited that it's happening. Um, so yeah, it's great. It's going to be a fantastic service, and we're really glad that you're here to join us. Amazing. So we're going to start off with a time of worship. So why don't we stand, if you're in church, stand if you're in your homes. Um, we're going to worship the Lord together. <laughs> Um, I'll pray and then let's worship. Father, thank you so much for this morning. Lord, we pray that you would fill Christ Church Felton right now. God, would you fill the kids' room? Would you fill the room we're in now? Would you fill everyone's homes who's watching online? Lord, we want to meet with you this morning. Would you help us focus our eyes on you as we worship you now? Thank you, Lord, that when we take a step towards you, you take a step towards us. Yeah, we want to lift you high, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Um, lots of new faces. I don't know. That's exciting. My name's Lauren. Um, can I just encourage you? Obviously, it's only going to be me and lovely Selena who can sing in here, and you've all got your masks on. Um, can I just encourage you and remind us this morning to um, just to really make that choice to worship the Lord? Our worship, thank goodness, isn't contingent on his piano or our voices or our wonderful uh, PA system. <laughs> um, it's just a choice where we are responding to the glory of God and we're telling him, giving him his worth. <clears throat> That's my baby. Um, so can, yes, can I just encourage you, let's just get ourselves into a posture of worship this morning. Um, engage your mind, engage your body. You are more than welcome to speak while I sing as much as you like, whatever is going to help you keep your eyes on Jesus and just give him the glory this morning. Is that okay? Yeah. Great, amazing. Thanks, Andy. <laughs>
Glory to 
Yes, Lord, we're so grateful. We're so grateful for you, Lord. Thank you for your presence with us. And no matter where we are, Jesus, you're with us. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Lord, we just pray now that you would be, you could, you continue to be with us in the rest of this service, Lord. At every moment, every prayer, every word that is spoken, Jesus, that you would fill it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You want to take a seat? I'm just going to give you a little update on uh, updates. Just like, one, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> um, a little bit about what's going on in the life of Christchurch at the moment. Firstly, if you're new, whether that's you're new in the building or you're new joining us online, um, we would love to get to know you better. Um, hopefully, if you are new online, you've kind of made yourself known already. But if you haven't, um, do that. And if you're in the building, and you, we'd just love for you to drop us an email at hello at Christchurch and then Andy and Dizzy, our lead pastors, will get in touch and make some plans of how they can meet up with you socially distanced outside or on zoom somehow just to introduce themselves and get to know you a bit better secondly um prayer so everything we do at christ church is underpinned by the prayer life of of us as a church and a church family and um, there are two ways you can get involved this week in praying together with us um firstly there's a morning Zoom prayer meeting on Tuesday at 7.30. And if you haven't got the Zoom link, you can email Andy and he will send it to you. And then secondly, the Furnace, which is our weekly prayer gathering. This week, we're doing it slightly differently. We are hitting the streets of Feltham. <laughs> and I'm going to be leading us on a prayer walk, which is, I'm very excited. I've been awake quite a lot <laughs> since 3 o'clock this morning. And I've been thinking about where we're going to go and what we're going to pray for. And I just feel, I feel really, really stirred up at the moment about the fact that, like, not just Feltham, everywhere is living in darkness, mm. right? And we just need to be out there praying for God's light. And yeah. I'm getting really emotional. Sorry. It's good, Sam. Praying for God's light in the darkness. Mm. <laughs> He's coming. We're all going to be there, right? If you can't join us on Wednesday, um, just pray from home, right? Just join in with us praying from home. We're going to be hitting the high street and the local streets and the retail part, not retail, you know, Cine World. Like, mm. There are a lot of people losing their jobs in this area mm. and we just need to be out there praying for God to like see breakthroughs from God in this area, yeah. right? So yeah. join us. You still have to sign up. Um, you can do that online. And then what else is going on? Right, so giving. We are so grateful for everyone who gives Christ Church. We literally couldn't do anything without you so thank you for that if you don't give and you would like to our website is the place to go there's a bit that says give click on there and it'll tell you everything you need to know and also if you are not on a team or if you're on a team and you want to be on another one that is also going to be amazing for us because we have so much stuff going on at church and the only way we can do it is if we all gather together and serve each other so kids team youth team welcome team Techie team, worship team, all the different teams you can be part of. Um, we all know that you're such gifted people, and we want to see you serving in church. Um, so please, if you're not on a team or you'd like to be, um, get in contact with us. The hello email is the place to go, hello at christchurchfelton.org. Um, we'd, love, we'd love you to serve. Yeah, go on. Um, so Bishop Graham's been busy, and he's got a book out, and this is your opportunity to get hold of that book. Ooh, and if you're really exciting. nice, and you could ask him, maybe I sign it for you. <laughs> um, we would love you guys to take one, but if you do take one, can you drop us an email at that wonderful email, hello at Christchurch, and let us know, and then we will send you a link so you can pay for it. Um, they're at the back. Um, so this is weird. You're going to have to go out that door because <laughs> that's the exit. Go around the front, pick one up, come back through and go back out that door when you leave. Because <laughs> you didn't quite think that through. It's a roundabout. But yeah. And then, yeah, so that's how you get hold of one. And then do let us know so we can send you the link. Um, this is a housekeeping thing that we forgot to tell you. You do have to leave that way when we do. But if you need to go to the toilets during the service, they're that way. It's on my, it's on my lift. You can be sneaky and just go 
avoid the one-way system for the loo. Uh, we are now going to do our peace. So if you want to get your phone out, text all your lovely, wonderful friends and just say, peace be with you. I love you lots. Hope the Lord is with you today. Um, and shout it across the room to various people that you like. Um, or does anyone, actually. Anyone. Share the peace of the Lord. <laughs> um, let's do that now. Grab your phones. Welcome back, everybody. Um, so we're moving on to the super exciting part where Andy gets licensed. I'd love to invite Bishop Graham up, who's going to take it from here. So thank you very much indeed. It is great to be with you at Christchurch this morning. Uh, I often think of you and uh, pray for you as um, a really exciting new venture in this part of the world. And as your bishop, um, uh, basically what... How ministry works in the Church of England is that we share ministry. Andy and I share oversight of uh, the congregation and the mission initiative here. But um, and so we're going to sort of um, make that proper today. So it's a little bit like uh, obviously you've been up and running for two years, almost two years now, which is fantastic. And uh, I just want to say to all of you, well done for the great progress you've made so far, especially during this last six months. This has not been the easiest time to build church and we've had to kind of reinvent things every few weeks and uh, you but yet you've done that in a really innovative way and you've managed to kind of keep together uh, both those of you online and also those of you here as well uh, so well done for that it's uh, really exciting to be uh, here and be part of this um, this morning but uh, what we're doing today is if you like yep yeah, as you know uh, we 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 kind of, rather than waiting for everything to be kind of, you know, signed up, we kind of said, well, let's get things going. And we've been doing that for the last two years uh, here at Christchurch. But today is the day when uh, we kind of make it legal. 
It's a bit like, you know, you're kind of going out with someone for a while and then one, the day comes when you have to kind of, you know, sign on the dotted line and say, right, we're committed from here on. So today is the day when by licensing Andy, uh, we uh, officially bring him into the, uh, if you like, the kind of structures of the Church of England. Uh, we are saying, if you like, that Christ Church Feltham is properly legal within the Church of England and also that it's here to stay. This is not just a sort of flash in the pan here for a couple of years and then it's going to drift off again. But no, we're committed to this particular expression of the, of the, the mission of God in Feltham. And we're here to stay. And we're here for the long term. And um, it's great to be able to license Andy and to, um, to include Dizzy in that as well. So what I'm going to do at the, at the moment is to um, um, uh, invite Andy and Dizzy to come up here, if that's all right. Uh, as you know, within the Church of England, uh, we always have to have, there's kind of one person who has to ultimately carry the can and be responsible, uh, and uh, Andy, as the duly ordained um, uh, minister here, uh, is that person. But I'm very also aware that Dizzy and Andy share this ministry together, which is why I'd love to do this together with both of you. So even though Andy is the one kind of um, responding with the words, and he is the one sort of taking the vows, you know, you know recognising the really important role uh, that Dizzy plays in this uh, as well. And there's a bit that um, involves you too, because we're all in this together. So what we're going to do is um, we have a bit of sort of legal stuff to do, which is that I have to read out what's called the Declaration of Assent, which is a, a kind of summary of what the Church of England is about. And then I'll ask Andy to... Um, uh, to make his oaths. Now, you'll need a Bible, Andy. Have you got one? Good. You have a Bible. Because these are really important oaths made on the Bible itself. And then we're going to sign something, and then we're going to pray for you. So, uh, yeah, why don't you come over there? Come, both, both come over there and face me. That's right. That'd be wonderful. Good. So the Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. Andy, in the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Andrew Graham, Derek Watkins, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness and in public prayer and in administration of the sacraments. I will use only, for, only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. Thank you. Now, if I can ask you to turn around, face the congregation and make your vow to the Queen. I, Andrew Graham, Derek Watkins, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors, according to law. So help me, God. And then turn back this way as you make your vows to the bishops. I, Andrew Graham, Derek Watkins, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of London and the area Bishop of Kensington, and their respective successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Wonderful. Now we have some signing to do. So. So now, Andy 
having made those declarations, those vows, I'm going to give him a rather, rather fancy license uh, with a nice big seal on it, the seal of the Bishop of London. So it's got some rather kind of uh, um, technical legal language, so you have to kind of, you know, um, bear with this, but uh, I'm going to read it to you now, Andy. So Graham, Bishop of Kensington, to our beloved in Christ, Andrew Graham Derek Watkins Clark. Greeting. We do hereby grant to you license and authority to serve as the leader of the Central Felton Mission Initiative, established by a Bishop's Mission Order, made by the Lord Bishop of London on the 21st of November 2019, under Part 7 of the Mission and Pastoral Measure 2011, for such period as the said order is in force and to perform all ecclesiastical duties belonging thereto. And so we commend you to Almighty God, humbly praying in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that his blessing may rest upon you and your work. In testimony whereof, we have caused the Episcopal seal of the Lord Bishop of London to be affixed this 18th day of October, in the year of our Lord, 2020. So Andy, as we share ministry here, the way the Church of England works is that we do share this. We have Andy's back. We look after him, and Dizzy, we look after you as uh, we pray for you and you pray for us. So Andy, uh, we are delighted to give you this license to minister here in this place. Now as we do this together, uh, we uh, want to make sure that we surround this uh, in prayer and also in a reminder of what we're about together. So Andy, if I can ask you to come around here and Dizzy. Um, we've got a, a few... Um, a kind of reminder of what we're about as a church. So if I can ask you all to stand, hopefully up on the screen, uh, some words are going to appear in a moment. Uh, and uh, this is something we do with all the churches when we license someone as the new leader of a congregation, which is a kind of reminder of what you're about. And so, we're going to, so I'm going to say the initial words, Sandy will ask you a series of questions, and then you're invited to respond with good gusto. Uh, we don't just want to whisper this because this is a really important commitment of what we're about together as the church. So I now invite you to affirm together your commitment to the task of ministry, witness, and service to which God is calling you all. We are to baptize and, and make, make new, new disciples. disciples. We are to read God's holy word and, and join, join together, together in prayer. In prayer. We are to attend to God's word and proclaim, proclaim it, it in the world. In the world. We are to celebrate the Eucharist and be, and formed, be formed as the, as the body, body of Christ. Christ. We are to care for this community and, and show, show the, the love, love of Christ, Christ to, to all, all in, need. in need. We are to celebrate the sacraments of the new covenant and, and bring, bring God's, God's grace, grace to human, human lives. lives. We are to nurture our children and, and awaken, awaken them. in them a living faith. And we are to lead all people to Jesus Christ and prepare them to enter his heavenly kingdom. So we pray quietly for a moment. So let's say this together, good and loud, so Feltham can hear it as we <laughs> declare today these words. We, we declare, declare this, this day, day that the Lord is our God. God. We, we will walk in his ways. ways. We, we will keep his decrees. We, we will obey his commands and live in the power of his spirit. So Andy and Dizzy, if you can come around here for a moment. Uh, normally this time we'd invite people to come around and lay a hand on Andy and Dizzy and pray for them, but obviously we can't do that right now. But uh, we can still pray. And as Andy and Dizzy stand in the middle there, and um, uh, yeah, face, face the congregation, that'd be brilliant. Um, it would be wonderful if, if we can pray together for them. If you'd like to say a prayer for them, just raise a hand and someone will bring a microphone. Have we got a microphone around? Okay, so, so yeah, if you'd like to say a prayer, it'd be great if, one, if, if maybe two or three people could come and uh, pray for Andy and Dizzy uh, as they come down here. And then after that, I'll uh, say a blessing and we'll... Um, uh, we'll uh, we'll draw this part of the service to a close. So let us pray. You may want to stretch out a hand towards them as a gesture of prayer and support for Andy and Dizzy as they lead uh, the church here. And please, if you want to come and pray, come down to the front and offer a prayer.
Father God, we thank you for Andrew and Dizzy um, and for the many, many blessings that they, they pour out among us. Thank you for the gifts that you've given both of them and, uh, and how the gifts they have complement each other so well. Um, we thank you for the last two years and, and we just pray your blessing on, um, on their continued ministry here at Christchurch. And, and just a yeah, big thank you for making them great guys. Um, we love them. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for just a blessing that you've given us for bringing both Dizzy and Andy to lead us um, just in our relationship with you. First of all, I just want to say thank you for just the way they've just brought in such a relatable terms to all of us so that we know that we're all in this together in terms of how relationship we go. So Father Lord, you have shown them the way to lead us and I pray that they continue to listen to you and understand that you have, you have brought them to this ministry and you know how to guide them through. I pray that their confidence should always be in you, that when there is any doubt or any hesitation, they know that you have brought them and you are leading them in the way they need to take us, in the direction they need to take us. I, wanna, I appreciate them, Lord. We appreciate them, Lord. I would just pray, Lord Jesus, that you continue to just shower your blessings upon them, Lord, and just give them just a real firm confidence that you have brought them here and you've given them the tools and the heart to lead us to where you need us to be. In Jesus' Lord, I just thank you for Andy and Dizzy. I thank you that you have called them to this place and those you have called, you anoint. Lord, that your spirit it will flow through them, giving them the, the right words, giving them the vision, giving them the stamina, giving them all they need, Lord, to serve. And I pray that we as a congregation would hold them up in prayer, Lord, would get alongside them would lift them up to you lord because they are here serving us laying down their lives for us lord and we ask that we would do that for them that we would be a body where there is love amen amen so i did if i can ask you to face this way as uh, i pray god's blessing over you May the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, strengthen, establish, settle you in the faith, give you the gifts you need for this ministry, fill you with his spirit, inspire you with his love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you, all those you care for, all those you pray for on this community and the people of Felton that you are called to reach. Amen. So the Lord declares this day that you are his own, his treasured possession. Work together as a people holy to the Lord your God and may God meet all your needs from his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To God, our Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. I think now would be a very good time to say well done. <laughs> so I'm back to Sam at this point. There you go. Okay, that was exciting. It smells so, it smells like bonfire night in here now. Um, and we have a little gift for you from your lovely church family. 
And we have a special little video message for you. I feel like you want to say something. Do you want to say something? <laughs> okay. Well, you can take the gift. Take the gift and weep through this message. <laughs> I love church, Christ Church as well. Um, you did it. You're awesome. I'm so proud of you. You're the best. Congratulations, brother, on your licensing. You've done it! Yay! Andy, congratulations. One of the things I really appreciate about you is your permanent enthusiasm and the way you encourage others at all times at church. And I enjoy listening to your sermons because I always think that they're very well thought through and clear. Thank you very much, Andy, and congratulations for today. Well done, mate. We're so proud of you. Woo! They are what a legend. What do you want to say? Woo! <laughs> Andy, you're my favourite Aussie, uh, a great mate, and an all-round top bloke. Andy, we love doing life with you. Thanks for being a great friend and our pastor. Hey, Joseph, what do you think of Andy? Hi, Andy. Um, we think you're awesome. And um, wanted to say thank you for being a leader who empowers other people and then releases them into their gifting. Yeah, and um, another thing we both love about you is how you're willing to be really vulnerable and really honest regardless of what the topic is um, and we just find that massively inspires us um, and other people and just um, really points everybody to God and that is awesome. Thank you. Andy, I really appreciate your authenticity, your depth, your humour and your passion. Andy, I just wanted to say a huge congratulations and a big thank you. Um, thank you for everything you do. Church, and um, one thing I love about you is just how open and vulnerable you are. Um, you're just such an encouragement to us all, and um, yeah, you just make me want to be a better person <laughs> and continue my walk with Jesus. So, thank you, thanks for all that you do, and lots of love. Aside from your awesome taste in jumpers and your incredible barbecue skills, I just want to say how much I've really, really appreciated um, your, your preaching. I think the way that you communicate the gospel is so amazing and it's really helped me with my own personal journey in faith. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, you're a legend. Well done, Andy. You did it. I'm so beyond proud of you and um, so thankful to the Lord to ev for everything that he's been doing in and through you in the life of Christchurch and I'm just really excited to be on this journey with you. Love you loads! What, what is it that you like about Andy, Sienna? I like his jumper. You like his jumper? I like the top that he wears. That is so cute. How do you top that with Sienna? That was so cute. Um, so we are going to have a time of prayer now, and um, we're doing it slightly differently. Um, so we're going to watch a little video, and the Methodists um, have, are going to lead us in our prayers. My name is Andrew Reid, and I'm the superintendent minister in the Staines and Felton circuit. Juliet is my colleague, who is based in various churches around the circuit, including here at Christchurch. I'm really pleased to be able to join you by video today to share in this service to license Andy Watkins here at Christchurch Felton. One thing I enjoy is long distance walking. Over the years I've covered the South Downs and the North Downs, the Downsway Link and other routes as well, including the Thames Path. The things about those walks which have taken place over a number of years 
is that membership of the group changes. At the center of our group, there is a core of four, four people. And we have negotiated these walks and got to know each other very well. We have different theological perspectives. And this has led to many interesting conversations. And we've never fallen out. I find myself comparing my experience in that group with the situation here in the Staines and Felton circuit. As a circuit, we have journeyed together. And when I came back in 2015, I knew that there were plans to realign the circuit to the extent that it would eventually be absorbed into neighboring circuits and lose its identity. As you can tell, that hasn't happened. In about 2017, I was approached by Jonathan Rust, suggesting a partnership with the Anglican Church. Christ Church was already part of a sharing agreement with the United Reformed Church and the Anglican Church, but that was in the process of being dissolved. We needed to decide what to do with this building, and I met with the chair of the South East London District of the Methodist Church and with Jonathan up in London, and I said that I would put the proposal to the circuit. One of the problems was to come up with a mechanism to make it all work. The advice I received was to tell the solicitors, just make it work. That sounds nice and easy, but I can tell you that it has not proved to be the case. As the two churches traveled together, Jonathan told me that they had identified an energetic, inspiring curate who would be a real asset to the partnership, and he was considering the offer. I met with him and it was clear to me that we could work together and make something of this site in sharing the love of God with this neighborhood. It's been a real pleasure to work with Andy in the lead up to the opening of the church in 2018. And I've enjoyed watching him lead and guide you as a congregation with a heart for this community. I am glad that you too have joined the group for the long distance walk and it will be good to get to know you over the coming months and years. Andy and I are working hard in the background to get the paperwork sorted out, and I'm sorry that this has still yet to be finalized. But that too is part of the long distance process. When obstacles arise, we tackle them, and we will ensure that with God's help, we will make it work. I'm happy to let you know that I, as Superintendent, Juliet, the Staines and Feltham Circuit, and the Methodist Church are in this for the whole of the journey, which is a long distance one, with more and more people joining us each step that we take. May God bless us in our endeavors for his kingdom. I'm going to hand over to Juliet. I'm really excited today that this is happening. We give thanks and praise to God for Andy's licensing taking place today. I say Ebenezer, thus far the Lord has taken us. The church is not the building. The church is heavenly. It's the people who worship in this place. Andy, you have been, you have been brought here by the hand of God for a purpose and to fulfill his will for the greater good of the church. Whatever God has given you is to serve this church. This licensing comes with anointment and with God's favor. May God bless your ministry here so that many who live in Feltham will come to know Christ crucified and the power of his resurrection. May God bless your ministry, Andy. Lord God, we are so glad that you have brought us together to share in this journey. I thank you for Andy and his commitment to this process. I pray that you will sustain both of us as we continue to tackle the legal aspects of the partnership. And we ask that this will not get in the way of our mission. To save you 
here in Feltham. Lord God, we are pleased that you are with us on our journey. We pray that we might keep in step with you as you continue to guide and direct us. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Oh, I don't need this on. Woo. Um, so we're going to um, have our reading now. Rodardo is going to come and bring us our reading, and then Bishop Graham is going to come and share the word with us today. Uh, chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. The parable of the Good Samaritan. Put my glasses on. Right. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, Lord, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so... He asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, where, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks very much. As we sit, shall we pray? Lord, we ask that you would open our hearts, our minds, our ears, that we might hear your word spoken to us today. And we ask this in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, today we stand at a particular moment in the life of this church. We've just been reminded of this partnership we have with the Methodist Church and it's wonderful that uh, uh, we've been able to do this together with the provision of this building and we have great hopes and visions for it but also the community coming together to make this happen and so if you like what's happening I think today there's sort of two particular moments I want to draw attention to one is that uh, you reach a bit of a milestone today it's a milestone because today you know you kind of become legal and these uh, licensing is a moment of saying yeah you're here to stay for the long term but also, we find ourselves in this moment, right 
at this time of change in our, in our city, uh, where we are going through this kind of dark journey of the pandemic at the moment, and we've just entered a new phase of it as we go into tier two, and we uh, are not able to, to mix in quite the way we were able to. We're not able to go into each other's houses any longer. And it is a really challenging time and place to do ministry and to build the church. One of the words that's just come to me, I guess, as I've been thinking about what we're experiencing uh, in our society at the moment is that the pandemic is quite disorientating. Uh, we feel that all those kind of familiar landmarks are no longer there. The things that used to be part of our regular rhythm of life, you know, traveling into work or uh, seeing friends and going to each other's houses, going out for meals, going to the cinema, going to football, going to sport, doing all the kind of things we would normally do. Well, they're not there anymore, and it's a different pattern of life, and it feels very disorientating. And every few weeks, the rules seem to change, and you have to think, well, what, what, what am I allowed to do now? Well, what can I not do? It's all very disorientating. And at these two moments, this moment of this community taking a new step into the future, but also this disorientating moment of the pandemic, it's maybe an important moment to kind of go back to basics. When you're disorientated and a little bit lost, you need to find something that's familiar, something that you can rely upon. And so I want to go back to what is your calling as a community as you seek to bear witness to Jesus Christ here in the middle of Felton. But also, what's God's call to us right now? How are we going to see ourselves through this, these coming months or maybe even years that it may be until this mm. pandemic is behind us? And uh, when we think about those basics, those fixed points, I want to come back to this passage that we've just read mm. a, a few moments ago. A number of years ago, back in the uh, um, 1950s, I think it was, C.S. Lewis wrote a book called The Four Loves, and he described four different kinds of love. And today I want to talk about four loves, but a different four than Lewis himself mm -hmm. talked about. Because in this story of Jesus, particularly the words he says at the beginning, it seems to me there are four things he says to us, which are a great guide to us, both in terms of what you're called to as a community, but also how are we going to get through this pandemic together? Four things we are called to love. We are loving beings. That's who we are. We kind of seek to put our, to, to, to express our love. That's what we're made to do. But what is the direction of our love? And there are four things I think this passage says that we are to give our love to. And the first is, of course, in that statement of Jesus when the expert in the law comes to him and he says to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Or as we might put it in our language, what's the most important thing in life? What is the secret of life that we need to follow? And Jesus' answer is in some ways quite simple. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I think hidden in those are four different kinds of love. And the first is the call to love God. That is our first calling. That is your first calling in your life, in your community, and particularly at this moment of going through the pandemic together. The first calling on all of us is to love the Lord our God. Now, it's important to remember why Jesus says this. We are called to love God, not because God needs it, but because we need it. God is self-sufficient. He doesn't need our love. He doesn't need our praise. He doesn't need our devotion. He likes it and enjoys it, but he doesn't need it. But we do need it. We need to love God, to praise him, to worship him. I was reading this uh, summer. A uh, rather long book by uh, St. Great St. Augustine called The City of God, 1,200 pages of it. And one of the things that comes through very uh, strongly in that is this point he makes again and again about how the reason we are to worship God is not because God is some needy person who wants us to tell him how wonderful he is all the time. You know, that kind of person who's a little bit sort of needy and just wants to be affirmed all the time, wants to be told how wonderful they are. Well, God is not like that. The reason we are to worship God is not because God needs it, but because we need it. In fact, Augustine says this, no one would say that he intended to help a fountain by drinking from it or a light by seeing it. 
His point is, when you go to a fountain, you're not helping the fountain by drinking from the fountain. You're just receiving from it. When you see a light shining upon you, you're not helping the light by looking at it and enjoying the light. It's giving to you. And so he's saying loving God is a bit like drinking from a fountain, like seeing in the, in the light. We love God, not because he needs it, but because we need it. The reason we say our prayers, the reason we come here to worship, the reason we read the Bible, the reason we come to share in the Holy Communion, is not because God somehow cravenly needs our worship, but we need to be reminded again and again of the goodness and the mercy of God. We need to be brought back to receive the gifts he has for us, the gift of his presence in bread and wine, in, the, in each other, in worship. And so day after day, you and I need to come back again and again to say our prayers, to read the scriptures, to hear again, to receive from God. Even this morning, I got up and uh, uh, I, I normally do the um, uh, kind of Church of England morning prayer. So it's on my sort of app on my phone and I go through it. Just this morning, the psalm had these words. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all that he has made. And that to my soul was just a little reminder. Okay, look, God is good. You may be going through the pandemic. You may be aware of all kinds of people who are struggling at the moment. And I'm aware of that great deal of marriages that are in that are struggling, families that are having a hard time, people who are experiencing bereavement, all of that may be around. But the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He is good to all. He has compassion on all that he's made. Now, I needed to come and worship God this morning through my prayers so that I could receive that message. I could hear again something of the goodness of the Lord. So there's the first thing we're to love. We're to love God. We are to connect into God as the source of life. And we need to do that day after day. I often think our, our souls are a bit like our, um, our mobile phones. You know what it's like when you uh, forget to plug in your phone overnight. You used it all, all day and you sort of let it just go. And you go for days when the, you don't actually plug the phone in. Gradually it just loses the battery. And eventually you pick it up and it doesn't work any longer. And there's a sense in which our, our souls are like that too. If we are not plugged into the source of life, regularly receiving from him, our faith begins to dwindle. It becomes smaller. It becomes less part of our lives. And other things begin to take over our attention. And so there's the first calling for us to love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and mind as a community and as individuals. The second kind of love I think this passage um, directs us to is a certain kind of love for ourselves. Jesus goes on to say, love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And so hidden in that command to love your neighbor as yourself is the kind of assumption that we sort of do love ourselves. There's a proper self-regard. Now, he's not talking about a, a kind of narcissistic self-obsessed love. Now, I've spoken about a little bit about this in, in the book that um, Sam was mentioning a, a little, little while ago, which is called um, uh, Why Being Yourself is a Bad Idea. It's actually focusing upon, actually, it's a book written actually largely for people outside the church, and it may be something you want to read to think about, something you might hand on and give to people you know uh, who don't have a faith and help to help them understand it, but hopefully it'll help us understand it too. The, the Christian faith is not about self-love in that sense, where I think I am the center of the world. I love myself before everybody else. But there is a certain kind of self-love, self-regard, that proper care for ourselves that is part of Christian faith. It's been said very often that, that COVID uh, is a marathon and not a sprint. We're in this for quite some time. And if we are going to get through it, and if we're going to be of any help to anybody else, we're going to need to look after ourselves. We're no use to anyone else if we don't have that proper self-care. So you and I will need to look after ourselves, mind, body, spirit. We look after our bodies, make sure we eat well, make sure we get exercise, we get out, we do the things that make us function well as human beings with the bodies that God has given us. 
And it's very easy when you're disorientated, when the normal patterns and rhythms of life have been disturbed, to let that slip a little bit and just to sit for hours and hours in front of your screen on Zoom, uh, never getting up, uh, maybe sort of eating sort of bad snacky food and all that kind of thing. So look after yourself. Do yourself favors. Your mind, your, your body, your mind. Uh, make sure you read. Keep your mind active. Uh, doing stuff that's going to keep you fresh and keep your thinking moving on as you try to kind of navigate your way through uh, these times. Feed your spirit. Uh, do the things that you enjoy. Making sure that, okay, there's some of the things that you might enjoy all the time. You see, going out to the cinema, going out for meals, going to football, going to sport, whatever else. You can't do that so much. But find other things that you really enjoy doing and make sure you do it. We have to feed our own souls and spirits in that sense as well. So there's a proper kind of self-love here. Now, let's be honest, some of us find it hard to love ourselves. It may be we, for many, many years, people told us that we were not particularly lovable. And we find it hard to have that self-regard, that self-love. And that's why we need to start with, number one, loving God. Because that message we need to hear again and again, that God loves you. It doesn't matter what anybody else has said about you. God speaks words of love and compassion over you. He thinks you are worth it. He thinks you are worth every gift he gives you every day. The breath that you breathe, the home that you live in, the friends that you have. He's given every single one of these. He's given you this community. And so God gives all these things to you. And the more you let that word sink into your heart that God loves me, then you might just find it's that little bit easier to love yourself. You may not feel or think that you deserve the love of God. And in one sense, you're right, none of us ever do. But whether we deserve it or not, God gives us his love. He gives us Jesus Christ, his great pledge of love to us, which is why we need to hear it every day. So this is the second kind of love. We're to love God, we're to love ourselves, and then thirdly, we're to love our neighbor. Now, this is a time when, if you like, uh, <coughs> COVID, if you like, has in many ways has sort of shrunk our world, hasn't it? We've spent a lot of time alone, isolated in our houses. We're now not able to go and visit each other's houses any longer. Uh, when we go down the street and someone comes towards you, no longer do you, uh, if you know them, go up and give them a hug or give them shake their hands. You just keep your distance. And if it's someone you don't know, you can have to give them a wide berth in case they might breathe all over you. And that's strange what that's doing to our sense of neighborliness. We're just a little bit isolated from one another. And it's maybe particularly at this particular moment when our sense of neighbor has become a bit fractured that we need to be actively finding ways, properly, socially distant, safe ways to express love for our neighbor. Now, this idea, uh, love your neighbor, you know, it's a phrase that we use all the time. We always think about it. It's actually one of the most radical ideas that has ever been promulgated in the history of the world. It's there in the Old Testament. Jesus picks it out as right at the core of his mission, and right at the core of what it is to be human. And the reason why it's so radical is because it's so counterintuitive. For most of us, we think, okay, in our, civil, in our lives, who do we love? Well, we love our family. We love our friends. We love our spouses if we have one. We love those who love us. We love those who are like us. And that's natural. That's natural. It's proper, proper and right that we love our families. We love our friends. We love those who are close to us and so on. But Jesus says, you know, the secret of life is not just to love your family and friend. It's to love your neighbor. And the point about your neighbor is that you don't choose your neighbor. Your neighbor is just given to you. In the Good Samaritan story, there's that question at the heart of it. Who is my neighbor? And the story goes on. This Samaritan is walking along and he just happens to bump into someone who's been beaten up and by the side of the road. That's his neighbor. Your neighbor is the person that God places in your path day after day after day. Now, that might be the person who actually lives in the house next door to you or the other side. It might be the person you work with who's on the desk 
next to you or on the Zoom call that every day that you, you, you encounter. It might be the person that, well, I don't know whether you go on the bus these days, but if you do go on the bus, the person that you can, is in the bus stop uh, next to you. It's the person that you hadn't chosen, that is not related to you, might be like you, but might not be like you, but it's that person. That's the person God calls you to love. It's a radical idea because the other reason why it's a radical idea is because it is so transformative. Just imagine for a moment in this world, if, if we kind of went about loving those who like us, um, you know, loving family or friends, or maybe, you know, that sort of um, romantic love where we try to find the one person. And very often in our culture, don't we, we think that's the highest form of love, the highest form of love is finding the one that we're going to be with for the rest of our life, the one we fall in love with. The problem with that kind of love, family and friends, or or loving the person we've fallen in love with, is that people get left out. There are people who never quite find the one. Or they find the one and it turns out not to be the one because the marriage breaks up or the, the relationship breaks up. Or people who don't have family or close friends. It's not a system to actually care for everybody. But imagine for a moment every single person in the United Kingdom had learnt how to love their neighbour, no one would get left out. Because everybody has a neighbour. That's why this is so radical. Now that's our calling, to love our neighbours. This radical idea that we get right at the heart of the Bible, the call to love your neighbour. Now, when it says love your neighbour as yourself, what does that actually mean? What it means is not a feeling towards them, Christian faith never says we're to admire our neighbors. We're not even, we don't even have to like them. But we do have to love them. And what it means to love our neighbor, when Jesus says love your neighbor as yourself, I think what he means is this. How do you love yourself? Well, the way in which you and I love ourselves is that we make sure that we have what we need to get by in life. I make sure I eat every day. I get three meals, I have my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner. Uh, I make sure that I have a roof over my head. Um, I try and find a job to keep uh, to earn some money and keep myself occupied. Um, I try and make sure I've got some friends to sort of talk with and, you know, to spend some time with and, and enjoy. I, I, I make sure I do the things that I enjoy doing. I do all those things we, we spoke about a moment ago, looking after ourselves. But to love your neighbor as yourself is to be as committed to making sure your neighbor has those things as you are to yourself. So it's making sure your neighbor has shelter, that they have food to eat, that they have friends and family and support and supportive community around them. And it's to think of your neighbor, whoever that happens to be, how can I make sure that they've got good shelter and housing? How can I make sure they've got food to eat and put on the table? How can I make sure their family is supported in the way that, 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 that they need to be? How can I make sure that they've got community that they, they plug into, that they have enough to, to, to live on, uh, but also to live well on. And it's to be as committed to your neighbor's welfare as you are to yourself. It's not to kind of do yourself down and think, you know, I don't matter, and you know, to, kind of, you know, to, 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 um, to ignore your own needs, but it's to make sure that you meet your neighbor's needs too. Now imagine what it would be like, you just in Felton, if everybody did that. That's what you and I are called to, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Not to feel a certain way towards them, but to act a certain way towards them. Because that is what Christian love is all about. And then the last kind of Christian... Well, just before I go on to that, just just think for a moment. That question, who is your neighbor? And I just want to go away with that question today. Who is your neighbor? The person that God has called you to love. It may be the person who lives next to you. Maybe the person in the bus stop, the person you work with. You know, who is that person that you didn't choose, may or may not be like you or not, but you are called to love? And are there maybe four or five people like that in your life that you think, okay, that's who God is calling me to love. And, you know, I may or may not like them, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love them. I'm going to make sure they have got the things that, that, that I make sure I have myself. And what are you going to do this week to express love towards your neighbor? Last thing, the last kind of love that this passage doesn't mention, but it, well, it kind of does when it gets to the Good Samaritan, is that the call of, the, of Jesus Christ is even to go beyond loving your neighbor. It's actually to go beyond that to loving your enemy. Because, of course, 
The Good Samaritan story is the story of a Samaritan finding a Jew by the side of the road, the traditional enemy of the Samaritans. And yet, he did the very thing that Jesus was asking his, 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 his followers to do, to love not just their friends and family, not even just their neighbor, but also even their enemy. And the reality is that when we start loving our neighbors, it might actually turn out that our neighbor is also our enemy. They might be someone who doesn't treat us very well. They might be someone who is so different from you that you really kind of disagree with their lifestyle, their religion, their background, their approach to life, but you're still called to love them. And we're called to love our enemies because that's exactly what Jesus did. He loved you and me when we were opposed to him, when we ignored him, and even when we do still continue to ignore him. And so it's a time when we have to be just that extra conscious when things are tense and difficult. We can get irritable with each other, even within our families or our friends. We can get angry on social media or whatever else it might be, but now is a particular time to avoid that, to kind of go to the other extreme, to see what we can do to love those who are different from us, who would normally be perhaps our enemies. So this is the call. This is the call for you. This is how Felton will get changed. This is how you will make a profound impact upon this community. It's how you and I will get through the pandemic. If we learn these four kinds of love, we learn to love God, we learn to love ourselves, we learn to love our neighbors, and we learn to love our enemies. And if we do that, we will see the world around us changed, and we will see God's kingdom coming here in Felton as it is in heaven. Amen. So we stand as we worship. Thank you, Bishop Graham. There's so much to ponder there. I'm like quite feeling quite overwhelmed, actually. <laughs> I feel like God's doing some stuff in my heart right now. So he, I know he'll be doing the same with you. So why don't we just take a second to respond before we go, um, to ponder some of the stuff that God's Holy Spirit will have been impressing on your heart. I'm going to do the same, but in front of you. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's sing together. Which one should we do? Remember our dream.
So thank you for your spirit. Thank you for filling us this morning. And Lord, we, we want to thank you that actually you fill us for a purpose. And Lord, we pray that over the next week that you would show us ways to love our neighbor. God, would you really highlight people in our lives that you want us to minister to? Would you work through us this week? Help us to be aware of you, Jesus. Lord, we don't want this all for ourselves, God, but we want to share it with others. Would you help us to do that? Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm going to draw our service to a close. Thank you so much, Bishop Graham, for being with us and bringing us that word, um, which we are all pondering on. <laughs> um, as I said earlier, we need to exit this way. If you're collecting children, please do that quite quickly <laughs> and um you can do that from the front door and just wave drop them off basically have a great week it's been lovely to see you um hopefully see you tuesday morning wednesday evening or next week amazing have a good week